It was the night before Christmas. An all through a house, not a creature was stirring. But then the engineer woke up and oh my god, Santa's gonna land on our house! With Christmas being so close, I thought I'd just go through some of the design's considerations to allow Santa to land on our roof. Obviously, with Santa going to roof to roof at this time of year, we need to ensure that our roof structure is able to support Santa, his sleigh, and his reindeer. So let's go through some of the design considerations to allow this to happen. When starting up design, especially like unique like this, you need to do a little bit of research. So I needed to find out what is the weight of Santa's sleigh, his reindeer, himself, and the weight of the presents. When I was doing this research, I found that from NORAD, they estimate the weight at liftoff of the presence inside Santa Sleigh is in the order of 90,000 tons. So when you're actually looking at this, we realize that no roof structure will be able to support this type of load. So this is where I have to hypothesize how is Santa able to achieve this? Well, clearly he has some sort of mothership somewhere where he goes up to to load up presents. He also have a number of sleighs as well. So they go up, they're already loaded, he changes over, gets onto the new one. So what is the weight of these each individual vehicles that are coming out of this mothership and coming down? To make it practical, you don't want to be going up too often and you don't want it to be too big to be cumbersome to make too heavy on our roof. So I estimate it's probably about the same weight as a delivery truck, which is an order of about nine tons. Because this gives you both the flexibility of a big enough vehicle to allow you to go up, but also doesn't make it too small. So you're not going back and forth too often. And this would be something that you normally say on your standard street. So around nine tons is my estimation of the weight of Santa Slay. And also, when we're looking at Santa Slay, we cannot forget Santa. Now Santa himself, he's a little bit on the heavier side, as every time he goes down to someone's house, people leave out milk and cookies. So he's always getting these treats. So he's probably around 100 kilos. So now we're looking at the nine tons plus 100 kilos is where we're currently looking at. But of course, we've also forgotten the main power engine of Santa Slay, and that is his reindeer. So a reindeer weighs in at about 120 kilograms. So how many reindeer do we have? So we have Dasher, Dancer, Donna, Blitzen, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, and of course, we can't forget our dear old Rudolph. So how many do we have now? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight at 120 kilos each. It's about 960 kilograms total. So let's round that up to another ton. So now we've got about just over 10 tons with Santa and the sleigh and, and the main power engine, obviously his reindeer. So when we're looking at the implied actions, we need to look at the forces that are applied from Santa's takeoff and landings as they apply dynamic actions on our roof structure. So when we're trying to apply them to some sort of practical design methodology, we can see that there is such things as helipads and runways. So does Santa's sleigh take more off like an aeroplane or does he take off more like a helicopter? When you're looking at our roof structure, we can see we do not have these giant runways. So I hypothesize that Santa has to more take off like a helicopter than an airplane because of the constraints around our roof structures. So when we're looking at the dynamic load factors that we need to apply, we need to look up helicopter pads. So what are they? Well, there's two primary design actions that we need to look for. That's that first primary action where it's for a hard landing. So if Santa comes down roughly, what is the load factor we need to apply to have a conservative design? And it's recommended that you apply at least a two times dynamic load factor. So if we go back to the weight of Santa's sleigh of 10 tons, we times that by two. So now we've got a 20 ton load we need to design our roof for. There's also another design consideration is if we don't come down perfectly level, there might be an off balance load. This requires the design for 75% of that off balance load. So we go back to the design load we just calculated of 20 tons, we times that by 0.75. And now we have a 15 ton line load that we need to design. These loads are quite significant. So can our roof structure actually support the landing of Santa's sleigh? So let's do a desktop study to see whether Santa is even capable of landing on our roof. So when you're looking at the design actions that are applied to a roof structure, we either have gravity or wind loads. So let's first look at wind loads. Well, wind loads generally on a residential structure are in uplift. So they're in the opposite direction to the load that Santa will be applying on our roof. So for this desktop study, we're going to exclude it and look no further on the wind loads. However, we will move on to the gravity forces. And the gravity forces can be broken up into two different aspects as well. We have both dead load and live load. And the dead load doesn't really change as as the weight of the actual structure's self weight, the roof sheeting and any other permanent loads onside our roof. As they will always be there, they will be different for every single roof structure. However, that live load will make allowances for Santa to land on it. So on a residential structure in Australia, we only have an allowance of 0.25 kPa. So is there enough in that live load to allow Santa to land on our roof? From this, we'll need to work out 
what the actual KPA area of Santa landing on our roof is. So let's look at the dimensions of Santa Slow. So when we're actually looking at Santa Slow, we see it's broken up into two main sections. You've got the motor at the front, which is the reindeer, which the load is quite light. So if we're looking at the reindeer, they're roughly spaced at about three meters apart. They're probably about a meter, and meter or so apart from each other. So it means it can spread over a quite large area. So we're actually doing that calculation. So we've got two reindeer. We spread the load of about four meters in width and about three meters in length. So we can see we've got about a 0.2 kPa. So we can see the roof has enough load for the reindeer at the front. However, we also have the back section, the main section where all our presents are stored and where Santa actually is. If we remember back, that was roughly about nine tons. So if we're looking at that dimension, it's roughly about two and a half meters wide, or about four meters long. And if we divide it by that nine tons, which is about 90 kilonewtons, we can see that we get a KPA load of around nine KPA. So even before we applied our dynamic load factors, we can already see that we've got an issue. So if we're looking at that dynamic load factor at the back of Santa's sleigh of roughly nine KPA, we times that by two, we're now at 18. We're almost at 10 times the load capacity that our roof is actually designed for. So clearly we have a big issue. And this is hopefully something Santa has thought about. So as we clearly see the numbers, we clearly have a problem here. But as we do not have mass collapse this time of year, this is clearly something Santa has already thought about. As he's done the numbers himself, realised that the roof structures cannot support the weight of his reindeer and sleigh, and acted accordingly. So obviously he's invented this vehicle that he can actually hover above our roof structure and actually get off and deliver the presents. Now the roof has more than enough weight to support Santa and our presents as he walks across it to deliver them, however it does not have enough weight to support the sleigh itself. So you'll come across, you'll hover just above our roof, get off, walk in, deliver the presents, and this is where he's come in the ingenious of actually doing the numbers and realising that he can't actually land on those roofs. But he comes close enough that it appears as though he actually does. Happy holidays everyone, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, don't forget to hit that like button for that YouTube algorithm. And if you are interested in structural engineering and how it shapes our world, don't forget to subscribe. And if you do want all the updates, you have to ding that bell. Anyway, Merry Christmas everyone, and looking forward to a great 2021. Oh, thanks Anna. Ho, ho, ho!